we're going to start off today by going through an explainer on inclined planes. Any mass under gravity will experience a force, in this case straight downwards, and that force is going to be opposed in part by a normal force. So that vertical component of that normal force must oppose gravity, otherwise the block will either sink into the, block, into the ramp or start floating away. So um, because of Newton's second law, we know that the vertical component there is mg. So I'm just editing this video now and I'm realising that I haven't explained that very well. What I should have said is that the gravitational force experienced by the block can be broken down into two perpendicular components. One component goes down the slope, one component is perpendicular to the slope. So I'm just going to draw this further down. All right. So now our gravity represents the hypotenuse of this triangle. The other force in this vector sum is going to be what I call the parallel force. It's the force down the plane. So how do we know what we're going to do here? Well, clearly we're going to use trigonometry, but do we use sine or cosine? If I was to continue this line here, I'll use a different colour. We could say that this angle in here, beta, is equal to 90 minus theta. Because all angles have to add to 180. That means that this angle inside our new force diagram, the green angle here, has to be theta because we have 90 minus theta on one side, theta in the middle, and because of the definition of our normal force, we have a 90 degree angle here. So all three of those angles will add to 180. This means that our reference angle is our top angle here. So if we have that, that means that our force parallel or down the plane is going to be equal to our hypotenuse, which is mg. That's our force due to gravity. Times sine of the angle. And then our force out of, or our normal force, our force perpendicular, is going to be equal to the hypotenuse times cosine of theta. Right, in our example here, it's as simple as it can get. We have a goat standing on an icy and frictionless slope. We have to calculate how far down the slope the goat will slide in 15 seconds given an angle. So I've added some complexity, but ultimately if we want to figure out how far down it's going to slide, we need to know what the force is going to be because the force will give us our acceleration, which we can then use to find our displacement. So step one, the force experienced by the goat is the force parallel, and that's going to be equal to mg sine of theta. I haven't given the goat's mass here, but that's okay because that force is also equal to ma. So in this case, our masses will just cancel. We have a equals g sine theta. Now we're going to use g as 9.8. And that gives us our acceleration. We can then use that to figure out how far down the slope this goat will slide. So S equals UT plus half AT squared. We know that its initial velocity is zero because it's standing still on this surface. So our displacement is going to be half times 9.8 sine of 15 degrees 
times 15 squared. And I'm going to put that answer in off camera. So that goat clearly hasn't had a very good time sliding 290 metres down the hill. Our next example has a goat pulling a cart up a 15 degree icy and frictionless slope with a constant velocity this time. We have to calculate the force that the goat applies to the cart if the mass of the cart is 150 kilograms and the goat has a mass of 100 kilograms. So the first thing I'm seeing here is that we have a system mass of 150 kilograms plus 100 kilograms. So that's 250 kilograms. Now in this case, if F equals MA, we're moving at a constant velocity, which means our acceleration is zero. So our net force on this system has to equal zero. All right. In this case here, we have the system experiencing a force down the slope and the goat is going to apply a force up the slope. So F net is going to equal F parallel plus F goat. And I'm going to say that the goat is pulling in a positive direction. That means our parallel force is negative mg sine of 15. And the force of the goat is positive. And that's going to sum together to get zero. Rearranging, I can say that mg of sine of 15 is equal to the force of the goat, or 634 newtons of force. Our final example is about as complicated as it's going to get without combining these ideas with other ideas like ideas in projectile motion or circular motion. So in this case, we have to consider friction. Now, we're going to recall that the force due to friction is going to oppose the motion of the goat and cart system, and it's going to be equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. So now we're going to need to figure out not just the force down the plane, the parallel force, but also the perpendicular force. First thing I'm going to do is decide on my convention. So in this case here, up the slope is going to be positive again. And while I'm working with this friction calculation, I might as well finish it off. Mu is 0 0.19. And the force normal is mg cosine 15. which means we have a frictional force of 449.6 newtons. Okay. Last time we had a goat moving up a hill, it was moving at a constant rate. This time it's accelerating. So our net force is going to be equal to mass times acceleration or 250 times 0 0.9, which is 225 newtons. That net force is equal to negative parallel force, because that's down the slope. Take the force due to friction, because that's also going to oppose the motion of the goat, which is facing the wrong way. Uh, plus the applied force of the goat. So I'm going to substitute in as much as I can. Positive 449.6, that's not going to work. Positive 225 equals negative 250 times 9.8 times sine of 15. Take 449.6 plus the force due to the goat. Okay. 
Okay, I can add both of these to the other side and find that my force for the goat is equal to 225 plus 634 plus 449.6, which is 1308.7 newtons. And so with significant figures, we have one, two, one there, two there, one there, two there, two there. So I'm gonna to go to, I'm gonna to go to two here. It's about 1300 newtons. So that's inclined planes. There's a couple of examples in there for you to try. There's an explainer, have a go, see how you go with it, and good luck on your exams.